during the hot days or let me say during the summer when when in broiler farms there is no way to cool beds most of the farmers do not feed their beds during the daytime that is maybe from 11 a.m to 6 p.m this is just to reduce mortality which is caused by hypothermia in the flock this strategy postpones growth of the beds and in other words it takes longer for the boilers to attain maturity and this doesn't make sense at all on this video i'm going to give you a strategy on how to beat the heat and make your boilers to attain maturity on time i will also explain a very important factor that happened to your boiler chicks during the heat period and how to guide against it to reduce mortality to the barest minimum all you just have to do is to watch till the end what's up my people and welcome to life of a farmer love you can also follow me on my facebook page at life of a farmer love for regular update i remain your anchor ishokri of Okironye. you can call me over us on this channel we discuss farming in details how to grow your farm challenges faced by farmers and how to control them so ensure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get regular updates whenever i upload a new video don't hesitate to give this video a like comment and most importantly share for others to benefit without wasting your time let's dive into the main cocoa Brellas maintained in hot environments reduce their feed consumption this is a part of their physiological adaptation or better still a way to control heat stress the reduction in feed intake result in a decrease in the daily intake of nutrient which is usually responsible for the rapid growth but few nutrients to metabolize or to break down means that there is less heat that is produced by the body so even though the growth rate is slowed the brella can now more easily cope with the heat because of the less need for heat dissipation of a truth research data shows that the survival rate of broilers decreases as feed intake increases during heat stress, especially during the hottest part of the day. So, in addition to heat stress mortality, economic losses associated with broiler heat stress also occur as a result of lower growth rate and decreased feed efficiency. And broilers farmer will want to stimulate the feed consumption in hot weather so that their beds can grow but you should also know that any management technique that will promote or increase feed consumption activity during the heat period may be counterproductive and you might end up crying the extra feed consumed will increase the bed heat load and probably result in additional mortality let me explain this point a little on brella chicks you see by nature or naturally Brellas can't lose heat easily. They don't have the ability to sweat and they have to pant instead to get rid of the excess heat. Chicks that suffer from heat stress spread their wings and put up their feathers. They pant and produce thinner or less manure. As a result of increased respiration, the chicks emit extra carbon dioxide, which changes the pH of the blood. This pH is detrimental to the heart muscles and legs more head problems can arise as a result of this when the chicks are stressed they want to fight or flee and this is called fight fleet in quotes and it is in response to heat stress the body then enters a state in which it is primed for fight or flee when this happens the muscle get more blood while less blood is circulated in the intestinal tract this can lead to the so-called leaky gut syndrome and eventually death fasting the broiler prior to or during peak hot period of the day lessens the heat load and enhances the survival of the chicks but that's not all fasting reduces the heat production from digestion absorption and metabolism of nutrients fasting also has a calming effect let me explain this further movement in animals occurs through muscle contraction which generate heat. In hot environment, this heat production only adds to the heat load. So, to lessen the heat load, brellas should be kept as calm as possible to avoid this fight-flight 
I explained earlier. This is very important during the hottest part of the day. Once the hottest period are over and ambient temperature starts to fall, then the broilers will begin consuming feed again. Now, the question is, how do you go about fasting for your broilers so that it will not affect their growth rate? This I will explain, but first, Kindly subscribe to my channel if you haven't and click the bell icon to get regular updates whenever I upload a new video. Don't hesitate to give this video a like, comment and share for others to benefit. You can also follow me on my Facebook page at Life of a Farmer Loaf for regular updates. Thanks. To get it right, feed should be withdrawn between 5 to 6 hours before the expected peak in ambient temperature. In this way, heat increment will not coincide with the increased broiler house temperature. Heat stress should be managed by applying a complex approach, which is by replacing up to 20% of the energy in the feed from starch by energy from fat and oil. This is for those that do produce their own poultry feed. But if you are buying commercial feed, there are other ways to go about it in managing heat stress and this is by decreasing the stocking density by 10% and maintaining ventilation. Let me explain this a little further. In hot or humid environment with open style houses, adequate air movement is very important. During this period, if your poultry house can accommodate let's say 500 broilers, reducing it by 10% means you will stock 450 broilers. Then, if your poultry house can accommodate say 1000 broilers during the heat period, you will need to stock 900 broilers. And lastly, if your broiler house can accommodate 200 broilers, you will need to stock 180 broilers. This is what I mean by reducing it by 10%. This approach will encourage proper ventilation and air circulation within the broiler house. Also, the air movement facilitates removal of buildup of ammonia carbon dioxide and moisture which will have serious effect on your broiler chicks during heat periods. When the heat is intense, broiler chickens control their body temperature by panting since they lack sweat pores and during this process of panting to control the body temperature at this time, there is an increase in water loss by the lungs. For this reason, more water has to be consumed by the broilers during hot weather in order to prevent dehydration. So, cool drinking water will stimulate both feed and water intake. The irony of it is that when the temperature of drinking water is lower than body temperature, it will absorb body heat. Therefore, providing adequate and cool drinking water is extremely important to heat stress broilers. Usually, Anything that results in increased water consumption during heat stress will benefit the survival rate. In fact, there are researches that supplemented the drinking water with salt such as potassium bicarbonate, potassium chloride, sodium chloride and ammonia chloride to the increased water consumption will help to reduce the effect of heat stress in broilers such that the effect of the salt will not be felt. I have series of videos on managing heat stress in broilers which I will drop the link in the description box and also at the end screen of this video. Do well to check them out. It is a known fact that heat stress causes broilers to decrease feed intake and consequently nutrient intake and this will in turn reduce weight gain and prolong time to attain market weight. In this case, all you have to do is increase the dietary nutrient concentrations once you make the mistake by increasing the protein concentration of the feed, you are getting it wrong and this is a wrong approach and you will end up losing your broilers. Protein contributes more to metabolic heat production than the carbohydrate and fat. So, feeding imbalanced diet with regards to amino acid will result in increased metabolic heat production. Amino acid balance in the diet is especially important. Efforts should be made to formulate diet with slightly lower protein levels in order to utilize synthetic amino acid, especially methionine and lysine. What you need to do at this point is to increase the energy content of the diet along with other nutrients. 
Increasing fat calories should be considered in this case. There is also need for you to re-evaluate the dietary vitamin and mineral concentration. Also, the use of vitamin C as an anti-stress agent is often considered during period of heat as a very positive approach. A very important point I must not fail to mention is choosing the correct cosidio start. This is very important as well as the use of antioxidant and mold inhibitors in feed that are kept stored. Before I drop the last point, please kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon so that you don't miss important videos like this one. Give this video a like, comment and share for others to benefit. You can also follow me on my Facebook page at Life of a Farmer Love for regular updates. And also, don't forget to use the end screen to watch other interesting videos. Thanks. Lastly, the bottom line here is that brainers under his stress have to make critical life-sustaining physiological adjustment. In this situation, feed intake is reduced while the rate of water intake is increased. The only way to achieve your desired result as a broiler farmer is to make dietary adjustment and this will help reduce metabolic heat production and maintain nutrient intake. Energy intake and amino acid balance is of extreme importance in heat stress. Also, providing adequate ventilation and stimulating water consumption is very essential and must be encouraged. Another very important point is to minimize the bed's activity during the hottest part of the day to lessen the heat burden. Controlled fasting is beneficial and usually increases survival rate of boilers during heat stress. Thanks and God bless. See you in my next video. Peace out.